So today, the Garden Monastery in exile here at the Tsokchen of Garden, we are celebrating Garden Namchu, the death anniversary of Chitongkapa. So everyone who spoke, have praised the life and deeds of Jetongkapa. Uh, and then there are people from different parts of the world. Whatever traditional religion you may have uh, belongs to, but today here, the the people who take in, uh, pay uh, attention and to take interest in the teaching of the Buddha in, and particularly the Jerambuchi's uh, writings and his tradition are increasing. So uh, those who have gathered here with that kind of uh, interest, I would like to thank you all. So on the uh usually traditionally we have the uh from the Yume monastery on the 24th day of the 10th month and on the 25th Gyutu would make the tenshuk offering with, by, uh, with their multiphonic uh, voice saying while saying their prayers and uh, traditionally also we uh, used to pay uh, I mean, uh, visit the uh, reliquaries of uh, the fifth Dalai Lama and others and then on the Garden Ngamchu there is this tradition uh, of uh, saying the first Dalai Lama's writing, Shar Kangrima, which is to say, uh, in the, uh, the the mountain in the east, on top of the mountain in the east, and so forth, and then the seventh Dalai Lama's Ning uh, Dakya in the in the center of this um, um, the lotus at the heart with the eight petals and so forth. So these were very uh, inspiring prayers uh, in in front of the uh, Avalokiteshvara statue. This was done traditionally. I want so I wanted to read this prayer. First is the the, the uh, in the Shar uh, Kangrima, which is actually so. This first Dalai Lama received many teachings from Jerembuche, 
And then, as General Bucci himself instructed, the, the first Dalai Lama went to Tsang. There was a hermitage named Ryo Kangchen. I have been there. So uh, he wrote it, this prayer, Shar Kangrima, there at Ryo Kangchen. So the, when the first Dalai Lama was residing in his hermitage in Rio Kangjin, in the east he saw a, 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 a white cloud uh, floating in the sky. And so seeing that, he said he remembered his master. And w in the direction of that white cloud, a body of white cloud, he said there is Garden Number Geveling, which is Garden Monastery, and uh, the, the Master Tsongkhapa and his disciples are residing there. So the the, uh, the fact that uh, my mind has turned towards the Dharma is also the, uh, due to the kindness of Jay Yapse, the Jerembuchi and his disciples. So please take care of me and guide me throughout my lifetimes. I will also strive to, pre to uphold the teaching of the Buddha from life after life after life, as this prayer says. So may I be able to, as it is said in the prayer to uh, Tara, uh, Green Tara, uh, written by Jigindindrup uh, himself. He also prays that he may be able to um, be I mean, able to persevere whatever the conditions may be to uh, uphold the Dharma. And uh, at his um, le later on in his life, he uh, said that he was getting old. But his disciples have said that you have signs, uh, the, uh, called the visions and signs, which indicated that you will go to Sukhavati or um, a pure land. And his response was, I have no wish to be born, reborn in as, uh, the uh, in pure land, but I uh, pray to be born uh, amongst people who are suffering to serve them. So this actually had great, and I felt moved by this. Though I'm not able to repay your kindness, I will not be uh, let myself be tossed by attachment, anger, and so forth. But strive to uphold your tradition. And so the series of Dalai Lamas have served the teaching of the, uh, the tradition of Master Tsongkhapa. In uh, the biography of the second Dalai Lama Yang, by Yang Bachuje, he was, uh, he mentions that the second Dalai Lama was known as Rimebesha Sermova, which means the uh, the yellow the master of the yellow head sect who was uh, Rimepa, Rime, ecumenical, a non-sectarian, the yellow head master. So, he studied and, and learned uh, uh, from the different Tibetan Buddhist traditions, although his main tradition that he first uh, followed was uh, Geluk tradition. And then, because of his some connection with the Sakya master, he also received teachings on uh, Gombokur. Uh, there's a, a Semti. And then the next Dalai Lama, such as the, in particular this fifth Dalai Lama, has left a great legacy, contribution, again made a great contribution to the, all the teachings, all the traditions of the Buddha Dharma in Tibet. And 
So, while wearing the yellow hat, it, that is not. So the, the fifth Dalai Lama has written that the, some of the Gelufas uh, were not I mean, uh, not able to uphold it, uh, uh, the teaching of Mas, uh, Tsongkhapa. So it would be better for them to keep up with the teaching of the And Jerembuche himself has said that the intelligent ones should train their mind in logic in perfect logic. In Ngagrim Chemo, and where he says first that whether there are non-Buddhists or, or not in Tibet, but people still ha have the imprints of non-Buddhist uh, philosophical traditions. And at the end, in conclusion, he said and, and through uh, tra training in logic and, um, and uh, training your eyes uh, of um, training in the eyes of logic you should gain a very firm uh, uh, ascertainment or certitude in the teaching of the Buddha so that you are not led astray by opponents. And so studying the Tuptas is also very important. So of course, if, as we say, you have to check the quality of um, uh, turquoise by comparing the turquoise, one turquoise with another. And um, just as you whip a horse to, for it to, to uh, uh, run faster, I mean, you should also use reason. So with the perfect reasoning, you should train yourself in the eyes of logic and um, intelligence and find ascertainment or certitude in the teaching of the Buddha. So it's very important to study the different traditions, different texts, so that you may be able to gain, you may feel convinced of the teaching or one's own teacher through logic and reason. So therefore it's important to uh, uh, think about the meaning of the teachings rather than just the words. And then next, the first Dalai Lama complains. There are people in this land of snow who, while uh, proclaiming to be upholders of Dharma, they still, they, yet they uh, consider other Dharma holders to be uh, the sworn enemy uh, in the Dharma. So to, uh, with the motivation to cause ruin to others, uh, you uh, and with this strong, um, you know, clinging to some kind of a, a, a rigid, called rigid uh, solidity in things, and still claiming to be uh, of high realization, uh, to have high realization of the path. And these are all um, point, uh, called, um, things with which, uh, which are to be, uh, which leads one to feel embarrassed. Though one has gone astray into the wrong path, they are angry at those who are practice, sincere practitioners. Are they not possessed by demon? So without n not trying to uh, curb or uh, overcome their own uh, the enemies of uh, destructive emotions, 
people just in, indulge in um, gossip and uh, I mean just in debate and arguments and so this is like uh, trying to uh, uh, avert obstacles uh, that are in the uh, East by doing the Thoma offering in the West and so forth. And so on the Gandhi Namche day, this next prayer is said, uh, also said in the Avalokiteshwara temple in so there was also uh, the tradition of uh, the uh, reciting different prayers that were written by each of the Dalai Lamas in front of their reliquaries that are in Potala. And, but this particular um, tradition of reciting these two texts uh, in the Pakpal Hakam, uh, I felt very inspired. So, so in the center of the lotus with the eight paddles at the heart in the Avaduti channel. So we are uh, talking about here the, this the, uh, subtle uh, clear light mind which is beginningless. So uh, here the homage is paid to Master Tsongkhapa. This, this, is, this is the seventh Dalai Lama's text. And the next verse says that all everything in samsara and nirvana, so as it is said in this 32nd chepter of Mulamadevaka Karika, where, which is the examination of the Tathagata, the Tathagata is neither one with the aggregates nor separate from it. The Tathagata is not in the aggregates nor they are in the Tathagata. What else is the Tathagata? And the, the, the Tathagata doesn't possess the aggregates as well. What else is the Tathagata? So this can be actually uh, called used to refer to oneself. And I'm neither one with aggregates nor they are separate from them. Neither am I in the aggregates nor they are in me. I don't possess the aggregates. What am I? And so in this kind of analysis, and, and what you don't find is the things having a, some kind of objective independent existence, however much you try to search for a final identity that is a, 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 a objectively existing, you will, not be able, uh, you will not be able to find. And so if things were to have any objective independent existence, then there would be these logical fallacies that the, uh, the, the Arya being's mind, which is absorbed in the direct uh, perception of emptiness, would be destroyer of objects. And then uh, that uh, the, uh, the conventionalities of things would withstand ultimate analysis. I mean, uh, the, the, uh, and then. And that uh, the, the, the uh, birth, ultimate birth, ultimately there is uh, a birth or a rising of things would not be uh, refuted. And so whatever you say, what the point is that you should do analysis into the nature of things to find certainty in the how they do not have any uh, objective independent existence. So everything in samsara and nirvana, 
When you analyze them, nothing can be found, and that mind also cannot be found. So the body and the mind are the, uh, the factors on the basis of which we posit or uh, designate a person or a being. But if you analyze the person within the body or the aggregates and the mind, and so even the mind itself it has no intrinsic existence and therefore am a whole how nice, uh, how, how wonderful this nature of how things exist. So when you analyze how things exist, of course, earlier you would have this perception of things having some kind of objective solid existence as being this yourself also. You think that I am here, but when you do critical analysis, of to search for yourself, you will not find anything as being yourself. Similarly, it is the case with your hand. And a hand is made up of its um, uh, different parts, the fingers and the palm and so forth. But if you try to find that uh, the identity, search for the identity of the hand within the uh, palm and the fingers, you will not find anything. So though things have no objective independent existence, they appear to be so. And when you try to negate uh, the, the objective independent existence in things, you might thing you are actually uh, negating the, 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 an actual object of negation but still you are left with something um, uh, some kind of a uh, object which is um, existing solidly and so uh, the seventh Dalai Lama here says that just as the clouds in the autumn sky dissipates. So when you do analysis into the nature of things, what you actually find is that things do not have objective existence and your clinging to some kind of objective existence might be reduced as your understanding and insight into the nature of things. And, uh, called, uh, increases and then uh, what happens is all these appearances of uh, the and uh, the the uh, experiences would dissolve would just fade away from your view so the form and sound and all these things of course they do exist when, but when you have the certainty or they, when you feel convinced that they do not have any objective existence, of course they do exist, form and so forth, but so this teaching of dependent origination is something that no other teacher, the founding teachers of the different religious traditions have found, but you, the Buddha, and therefore the, the term, the name or the title teacher is I mean, actually befits you, you uh, whereas for others it's just... Um, a flattery. So we talk about law of causality, that things are brought about by causes and conditions, that the causes and conditions help in bringing about some result, and therefore for the realists, though they use the reasoning of dependent origination, they see that things still have some objective existence. Whereas for the Madhyamakas, this is a contradiction that things, if they are dependent or originated, how can they be independent? And therefore, when you assert independent and uh, self-defined existence in things, there is logical contradiction within your position. And therefore, when you see that things are dependent, you can understand that they are contingent upon other factors. And so in such a diction, 
the jerem which is commentary on mulla madima karika the zashi tikchen says that there are two ways of how things can exist they can exist either the way they appear to our mind or that they can ex uh, uh, exist by way of uh, uh, mere uh, designation through our uh, language and therefore since the first way of existence cannot be uh, uh, the true therefore the second must be by default true <laughs> So in uh you want the city and tender it. Uh you can so though everything has no true existence, they are like a uh, magical illusion, whatever sound and form and so forth. So this union of emptiness and appearance gives me the conviction of the infallibility of dependent origination so due to the kindness of my uh, teacher, the, the qualified teacher, which refers to Chijin Ngawang Choden, I have found this conviction in the, uh, tr uh, the final nature of how things exist. So this is the, what we do traditionally used to recite in the Avalokiteshwara temple in Tibet. So that's all. So on this this uh, celebration of the Gading Amchu has been very successful throughout. So when we commemorate Jelama Tsongkhapa, we should think of meditating and cultivating the renunciation, bodhicitta, and the correct view of emptiness which are found in his 18 volumes of his collected works. And with regard to the Master Nagarjuna's system of um, uh, the profound view, Jerembuche, as I mentioned the other day, Jerembuche was, as I said, he was like the second Nagarjuna. So his writings are incredible. On top of that, then we should add Master uh, Shandideva's Bodhisattva Charya Avatar for the practice of uh, Bodhicitta. Uh, it seemed in the past there was no tradition of teaching uh, the, this text much in the central part of Tibet, and therefore it's important for us to study it, this uh, Shandideva's text. And then, Jerembuche's commentaries on Mula Madhyamaka Karika um, and the uh, Madhyamaka Avatara, as well as studying uh, the 400 verses and its commentaries, is important. So Jamarambuche used to say that 